Hello YouTubers, this is an SMK PP700, that's a PCP pistol, single shot, got a little gauge on the end there, um, got a red dot, fake Trigicon, I yeah. think, is it? Really good value, I must say, under 30 quid. Uh, anyway, um, I've got one of these, Suez Daz, and we've both done the um, moderator silencer um, adapter mod, which is, uh, these are milled or turned from metal. TJ Rob, is it, Daz, where yeah. you come from? TJ Rob, um, you change that over the bit that's in the gun, that sort of goes in so far up to there, uh, and that enables you then to put any uh, sort of standard fit silencer or suppressor or whatever you want to call it. So uh, this this video is probably not going to get um, monetized or whatever because they don't like guns and silencers and 3D printing and all that in together. So um, we're just going to do this. We'll say what we want. Basically, normally we say, oh, I made this on my plastic making machine because of the YouTube silly rules. But in this video, it's not going to get monetized anyway. So not that we get, uh, we, we get like 30 quid a month from anyway. So uh, anyway, the idea of this video is um, because I got into the 3D printing, probably a couple of years ago now, I don't know if I was that long ago. Um, I designed, as one of my first little design things, and my design skills isn't really that much better now, but I have progressed a little bit. Uh, I made this uh, 3D printed sleeve, that's got um, your piggy rail on the bottom on the front there to put a torch on. I also printed a little shroud and that's got like a um, little billion iron sight, which, which does actually work, because these guns come with no sights whatsoever. They've got an 11 mil dovetail there, this is Piggy Fear, so I had to get a little adapter to put on there. And these are really good accurate guns. Uh, the shot count is fair, um, depending on what the power you got them set at. So this sleeve just um, slips all over like that. Um, and when you put the silencer on, that pretty much locks that in place. Um, so they can't slip off. One problem is you can't see the gauge on the end there. Originally that didn't really bother me, but as time went on, I do grab me, I weren't sure if that's my shooting, the gun was out, whatever. Um, so I had this quite a while and also started getting a bit loose on this bottom end there. The plastic was sort of flaring out, I guess that's lost a bit of the elasticity or because I've had it on and off so much that's just loosened up a bit. Uh, but it's probably due to the slight rise in um, diameter there. So that was my shroud kit, I've done one for Daz as well. Um, I had it on my gun for ages. Uh, anyway, Cut long story short, I got a new 3D printer, a more up-to-date one. Um, dirt cheap, uh, amazing value, 150 quid. Um, and I thought, I don't know, I'll design myself a new shroud. So this is what happened. Um, take the old one off, I'll put that down for a little bit. And um, this is my new shroud. So it looks a bit messy and ugly at the minute. That's a different concept where the top tube is printed all together with a bomb. So the whole thing will just slide on, there's no, no separate bit. Got a couple of little picky rails down the trigger end, which I'm going to show you. I've got another invention what I've got in mind for that. Now this uh, is printed in an upright position. I took about six hours on the, on the what they call the worst quality. It's quite a low quality, but it's still perfectly right for this purpose. And because you can't print in midair, for those of you who don't know about 3D printing, they have what's called supports. And that's sort of like this waste material. That's in between things. You, know, if you can print an overhang to a certain degree, but you can't print in midair. So that print in, in the support. Now, waste probably a fair bit of material, especially on this one, because that's got a support running all the way up this tube, just because I've got a lip on there. Uh, had I printed it the other way, I'd have had a big blob of infill there, and this wouldn't have been stable on the build plate. So, you know, it's pros and cons, learning these things, the ins and outs. So what I thought I'd do, this literally came off the printer so a half hour ago. Never done it on video before, taking all the infill off and seeing if it actually fit, because I wouldn't know. Now when you, obviously this is a six hour print, so what I tend to do, I'll design it, and to make sure that fit, because I could have had the distance between them holes wrong, don't they? And when I first done it, I did have a, so I, I printed a slice, so I can show you on this slice. So this is basically just a slice of this, so you do your model, you, you cut a bit off and print it, because that literally takes, you know, less than an hour rather than wasting six, seven hours on a print and then finding it don't fit. So as you go along, you make little slices. And I did discover on this one, I had a picky rail on the bottom, a little bit too close to the body. So I changed that, moved it up, got this bit to fit nicely, uh, just to get it. So now you can see the, the gauge in the end. This is all in one piece. Um, I think that's all gonna just feel a bit more nicer. And a lot of the picky, the picky rail is gonna be all the way along the bottom. And uh, so, um, what I'm going to do, live, live on camera as it were, I'm going to take all the uh, support off and you'll see what it really looks like underneath all this skin. It's almost like a, 
I don't know really, uh, a bit of ASMR type thing, I don't know. But here we go, so this should really peel off fairly easy. So the first little bit I ripped off on the on that bottom piggy rail and that is coming off pretty nice. So uh, I might have to get pliers at some point, like there's a bit in there, stuck in the bottom there. I might have to just uh, dig that out. I really should have put my other glasses on so I could see better. So uh, anyway, any little bits, I'll go back and turn up later. But I just want to get all the main support off so I can see, A, that it fit my gun, and have I got it right, you know? So uh, a bit, yeah, that's all paving off. This is quite, uh, this is quite pleasing, actually. It's like unveiling something underneath, taking the skin off a snake, almost. That's looking good, Daz. It's looking good, mate, nice. so far. But as to haul up the middle, that's uh, going to be the big test here. I could put up with a bit of slag in the piggy rails, but um, that haul up the middle, how it fit on the gun, is going to be the big the big one. So I might even finish that piggy rail off later. So that's a bit on the side. Oh, look at that. Look at this coming off. It's looking nice. So this is a 0.28 uh, print level, and the, the smaller that number, the better the quality. You can see it's got some lining on there, but that's... Uh, for a first go at it, that's that's not bad at all. So, uh, oh, that's come off all in one piece. I say these little, there's some little bits in there. I will have to dig out later. Uh, that's come off pretty clean. This this is coming off fairly easy here. Yeah. That's not going to be any trouble. So, uh, what I'll do, I'll just quickly whip all these off, and we'll do the the big bit in the middle, hopefully. Because that's so big and long, I'm going to have to get pliers on it and give it a little twist, get it to come loose. So I don't want to ruin anything. That's uh, wait a long time for this to come off the printer. And a little bit of cleaning up in there to do, but to be honest, um, same as the bits on the sides, but you can still use it as it is, which I will be. So really, all I've got to do is get that bit out of there. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at that, man, wow. So look, all that material that you have to waste for support, and that has come out nice and clean. Wow, I was expecting a bit more trouble, I must be honest. So a bit of what we call stringing, which is like strands of plastic. You always get it on most prints, uh, some worse than others, depending on the material, the temperature, and all the rest of it. So unfortunately, can't do much of that other than chuck it away. Uh, you, you can actually melt it down and buy a machine and make new film on but to be honest, um, I won't be doing that. So there we have it. My new, uh, my new one compared to the old. Different material. I like the material better. The picky rattle definitely look better. Better colour. Better colour, yeah. Um, so I've got some little bits of support in there, but that's all that. Yeah, I, I must say I'm really liking it, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous at the minute. Right, I'll have a swig of beer. The moment of truth. Is it gonna fit? Da, 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 da. Take my slice off. All right. If you believe in God, now is when you start praying. Is it gonna fit? Wow. What do you know? Well, I'd say that's a tiny fraction bomb on the end. But I can live with that, it's better than being too short. In fact, I could even sand that end down if I wanted, just to make this go down. God, that's holding on there nice, mate. I don't nice. even hardly need a silencer on to hold it on. I think that's because um, this bottom bit can't flex now. So let's get that on, to hold it on. And uh, well, I must say, at the minute, I am well placed. No, you can't have one, Daz. You, you can have the file and print it yourself. All right. So I probably am gonna either sand that top bit down or sand the whole bottom down. Cause there's a little bit, a tiny bit more room under that ring in there, but I must say that is better than having it too small. So, uh, yeah, I like it. Do you think it look better, Daz? Yeah. I mean, that's the old one. I like the material better. In fact, that picky roll along the bottom, mate, that's got a good grip on that. Um. Right, I'll show you now why I wanted the 
little picky rails on the side there. Not only do they look quite neat, I mean, you could have a torch, you could even have an extra, I don't know, whatever. Um, got another new little invention. Now this is literally hot off the prototype and um, hot bed as it were. So basically we have got a picky rail attachment that's in two parts. All I've got to do is get the bolts for it. And that's gonna go, I'll show you what it is in a minute. That's gonna go on the side there. That's not just an empty holder. Perfect size, that is exactly the same length, fair enough. So that is, uh, well, the holes line up as well. <laughs> this is getting good. Right, on the other side of this is the world's first pistol pellet holder, ready to grab your ammo. I must say, this is a little bit fiddly. This is a prototype, I'm still working on it, but they just pull out, it's got like a rubber skin in there. So, we got layer pallets, you didn't got carried no tin about. I could have one of them each side. This is a single shot gun. How you load it, you just slide that, pull your pallet out, bang it in, boom, you're away. I would obviously have that on the left hand side because uh, I'm right handed. And then I'll just whoosh, whoosh, boom. Um, there we have it. That will be um, developed a little bit more. At the, the rubber bit slides in, so you could you could have a 177 and 22 version. Um, at the minute, I'm just working on the 22 version, so I'll pull it through the pellets out and show you. Uh, so this is literally the very first prototype, so I'm going to make that rubber bit just a little bit better. So I'll just show you with the pellets in and with the pellets out, and um, yeah, it works. It does what it says. Um, a slight improvement I might do is um, put a hole right through the bottom so if you get something stuck in there, some crap or whatever, you can just poke it out. Other than that, that will be ready to go very soon on the Shootfish website. So thanks for watching. Hope you like it. Um, the first unveiling from uh, support we've done on camera. Um, oh, thanks for watching. <laughs>